you're not in the web today, you're in the dark ages. The web is where people socialize, shop, learn, and look for jobs. I mean, I think the only domain names left don't have any vowels in them. So, unfortunately, there's people that are excluded from this. What's happening? Well, economics is certainly a factor. Some people, I mean, they can't afford a computer, never mind an internet connection. Geography is also a factor. I mean, rural communities are literally disconnected. But I'm sure this isn't news to you. But there's also a third factor, which you probably weren't aware of, and that's design. People with disabilities are being inadvertently excluded because of limiting design decisions. Not that long ago, I met a PhD student who struggled to enter a URL in her browser. This very intelligent person just couldn't find the address bar. Now, this woman was blind and used an assistive technology called a screen reader to access the web. Essentially, screen readers allow you to access the web with your ears instead of your eyes. Now, she browsed around, like just tabbed around aimlessly, hoping to find the address bar, not knowing that she could get there in a single keystroke. A little embarrassed, she explained that, well, she hadn't learned how any of the keystrokes for browsing the web because just too few websites were compatible with her screen reader. When she had to use the web for her coursework, she sought assistance. Now, she's unfortunately in good company. A research study by Pew Research earlier this year found that 54% of you know, American adults with disabilities, they only 54% use the web. I think this is such a loss, considering you know, the web has so much potential to you know, bridge gaps and you know, really long-standing barriers for full social participation of people with disabilities. I mean, it's a place where you can get to in a single click rather than a complicated bus ride. The gentleman in my slide, he was told that well, you're going to have to wait for the next bus because the ramp isn't working. It's a place where you can be judged on your ideas rather than your appearance. Although this dog is pretty cute. <laughs> and as my friend and colleague who is blind said, it's a store where you can shop all day and ask all the questions you want. So how do you solve this problem? some pretty interesting suggestions online. You know, everything from bionic eyes to you know, braille keyboards to tactile screens, you know, even parallel internets. But no wonder some people think that web accessibility is an expensive, far-fetched proposition. Well, fortunately, it's not going to take a technological breakthrough for people with disabilities to be able to use the web. You know, it is possible today with assistive technologies to browse without using your hands. And it is possible today with assistive technologies to browse non-visually. Now, this is a screenshot of speech recognition software. Someone with, say, a repetitive stress injury would use this software <coughs> to basically browse without using their keyboard or their mouse. You can also ask to see you know, all the links on a screen and pick one. Now, you can do some really complicated things with the software. It's not just all about picking links. You can fill out forms. You can write entire essays, all without using your hands. Now, this isn't obscure, you know, highly experimental stuff. Did you know that your phone, iPhones have a number of assistive technologies built in. I mean, they have like screen magnification software with pinch and zoom. They have you know, text, uh, like writing support with the text prediction. They even have a built-in screen reader. Now, the cool thing is that you can use these technologies incognito. 
a browser or a website has no idea how it's being accessed, whether someone's using one of these technologies or not. What glues everything together is accessibility guidelines. They tell web developers to do things like, you know, just add alt text to images and, you know, make everything keyboard compatible. And that helps, basically, it puts in the things that, you know, these assistive technologies rely on. So we have a lot of good stuff here. And like we have good guidelines, we have good assistive technologies, but we're still missing a piece of the equation, and that's compatible websites. Now, imagine you found the job of your dreams. You're a shoe-in. All you have to do is answer a few questions. So you fire up your screen reader, and this is what you hear. Please answer all of the following questions before applying heading level 2. Tab column 2 row 2. Please answer all of the following questions before applying basic radio button not checked. 1 of 4. Tab please answer all of the following questions before applying intermediate radio button not checked. 2 of 4. Tab please answer all of the following questions before applying advanced radio button not checked. 3 of 4. Awesome. All right. So what was the question? Anybody know? It sounds like it was really important. Let's cheat. Oh, it wanted to know about English proficiency, obviously. Now, the sad thing is I didn't cook up this example for the purpose of this talk. This is an actual job application online. And even sadder is that the reason why it isn't working is just because a web developer didn't label the fields properly. I took 10 minutes and fixed this form. Listen to the, listen comparison. Please answer all of the following questions before applying heading level two. Tab required one. Please rate your English verbal communication proficiency. Basic radio button checked one of four. Tab required two. Please rate your English written communication proficiency. Basic intermediate advanced expert. All right, so I can't change the voice. The voice is going to stay the same. <laughs> but you can definitely make out what's uh, going on there. Now, labeling problems like this were one of the main issues found by researchers at Towson University. They did a survey of 100 U.S. federal government websites and evaluated them against Section 508, which is U.S. accessibility law. Their results were astounding. They found that over 90% of the website survey had accessibility problems. This does not bode well for commercial websites, which are reported to be even more problematic. I met a really interesting person on the way to an accessibility conference. We were sitting next to each other on the plane and did that typical plane small talk. And we quickly established that we were headed to the same place. Knowing that you know, I was a fellow accessibility geek, he started to show me some of the cool things that his company was up to. I mean, they were making math more accessible. They are making a screen reader for touchscreen phones. I was in awe. When I got off the plane, I would messaged some of my colleagues and said, I just met an accessibility rock star. <laughs> well, then the conversation turned to, you know, boring old me. And so, you know, what brought you to the conference? Oh. You know, my company, we make web applications and we want to make sure that they're accessible. He prodded me a little further. Well, you know, what type of web applications? Oh, well, you know, they're just used by millions of people for teaching and learning online. Wait a second, it is a huge deal to make something mainstream accessible. People with disabilities don't want to use a, you know, basic, you know, less functional version of site. But they don't want to use webmail for people with disabilities or you know the auction site for the blind they want to use the same things as everyone else and not have to ask for help so this is where you can make a difference yes you you know current and future politicians media educators and innovators start asking whether the sites that you influence are accessible because so many things need to be accessible. Everything from educational resources to you know, basic websites, brochures, 
internal systems that your company uses to core products. It's a really, really big deal. So I want to leave you with a few tips on how you might accomplish this. First, follow accessibility guidelines. I mean, the ones that we mentioned, it's just a gimme. And I mean, make sure that these are must and not a nice to have. But just following guidelines is not going to get you all the way there. Because really something isn't accessible unless it's actually understandable and efficient to use. And so that's why I have my second guideline, which is talk with people with disabilities. I mean, talk to them about their needs and expectations. Your like, existing customers are a great place to start. And from personal experience, I could say that they'll probably be pretty eager to talk with you. They can really help prevent poor assumptions from derailing a project. And finally, try browsing as someone with disabilities would. Try using a website with just a keyboard. Try downloading some assistive technologies. I, when I first got started in accessibility, I was handed this you know, checklist of rules. Make sure that all images have alt text. You know, make sure that link names are descriptive. Well, honestly, I didn't really have a good appreciation of the impact of this, these rules. And so when anybody you know, just want a clarification or questioned a rule, I had no idea what to say. So a colleague and I, we got together. We downloaded a whole bunch of assistive technologies, and we just started going through tutorials together. It was so much fun, but it's also a great use of time. Because not only could we answer those questions better, but it helped us have a better dialogue with people with disabilities. Because often their questions are met with fear and resistance. But when someone actually understands and appreciates like, what they need to do to browse the web, they're just so appreciative. People like that PhD student. Well, she didn't, under, you know, didn't know those commands for browsing the web before our afternoon together. She left saying that she would. If you do a little bit, a little bit on your part to make a just a resource accessible, it can make a big difference to someone else. Thank you.